Have you heard the story of the stone soup? It's an old European folk tale that plays up the value of sharing. I'm Diane Verniel, and in this program, we're going to sift through the moral of that story. Along the way, we'll take a hard-baked look at how and why so much of our food is wasted, from the farmer's field to your refrigerator. And we'll serve up an extraordinary solution. That's the main ingredient in this story. How a determined group of volunteers are salvaging tons of unwanted food to feed thousands of hungry people around the world. It's a recipe for goodwill and sustainability for a growing, hungry planet. This is Stone Soup, a Gleaner story. So here's the premise of that age-old parable. A hungry traveler pulls into a village and no one is willing to share their food. But the traveler has a bright idea. He lights a fire, fills an empty cooking pot with water from a nearby stream, and then drops in a big stone. A curious villager asks, what's in the pot? Well, it's delicious stone soup, of course. The villager has a taste and says, You know, what it really needs is some carrots, which he volunteers. A few more curious townsfolk line up to sample the soup, and to improve the flavor, each one tosses in some additional ingredients, an onion, celery, and beans. And before you know it, together, they've cooked up a delicious pot of soup. The lesson here is on the value of sharing. If people work cooperatively, they can achieve a greater good. We're on the outskirts of Cambridge, Ontario, inside a large warehouse, where an army of volunteers is washing, peeling, chopping, and drying mixed produce. The dried veggie mix is then scooped and sealed into plastic bags about the size of a small pillow. All this nutritious Ontario-grown food is on its way to feed the world's hungry. Fresh produce that is donated to us and we are working with volunteers to make it into nutritious dried vegetable mixes and fruit snacks. That's Elaine Mercus, manager at the Ontario Christian Gleaners. Elaine likes to think of her enterprise as the food bank to the world. Every day we can see what happens with people volunteering here, but the big picture of course is knowing that there's so many people in need around the world. We're getting stories from different mission groups serving in different countries. When you look at the gleaners by the numbers, their output is nothing short of astounding. 70 volunteers a day. That's how many people show up every morning to prepare and package the food. 25,000 pounds or just over 11,000 kilograms. How much produce is donated every week? 44 countries where the food is sent and seven million servings. That's the number of meals prepared each year for some of the world's most impoverished people. In just over a decade since their launch, the Gleaners has developed into a well-oiled machine with every cog in this wheel driving its success. To know that every day we can feed 25 to 30,000 people uh, with our food here, you don't want it to end. So, how do they manage to get so many faithful volunteers coming out to their Cambridge warehouse every day, ready for hours of manual labor? What about all that free food? Tons of it just shows up at their door. How do they send the thousands of veggie bags to those far-off destinations? And, considering the scale of worldwide poverty and hunger, are the gleaners making a difference? Elaine says it all starts with their volunteers. That is one of my highlights of my day, is seeing the volunteers, chatting with the volunteers. The volunteers are listening intently, and today there's a special guest speaker who's come all the way from the Philippines. Well, it's just a blessing and an honor to be here, and I'm so encouraged to see all of you. John Coffey, originally from Elmira, Ontario, is the executive director of a nonprofit organization called International Teams Tender, or IT Tender. For two decades now, his group has been feeding street kids in Manila and offering educational programs to both the kids and their parents. We use the Ontario Christian Gleaners soup mix and all their different foods regularly in our feeding programs in Manila. So our heart is to help children and youth from extreme poverty to be able to go to school, to be able to complete their education and have a better future so that they don't have to live in the slums or squatter communities 
once they have a job. It was while he was at university, first as an undergrad at the University of Waterloo, then at the University of Toronto earning a teaching degree, that a friend invited John to join a few short-term missions in the Philippines. Those trips had a profound impact on him. My heart broke for the kids who couldn't go to school because they couldn't afford just the daily transportation to ride a bus, they couldn't afford school supplies, a uniform, even just to get to public schools. So that really broke my heart. John has come to the Gleaners Cambridge Warehouse to thank the volunteers for the steady supply of food bags they've been sending and to stress the important role that food plays in helping children to learn. Our focus is education and we know that a, a hungry or unhealthy child doesn't make for a great student. They're not able to focus, they're not able to do well in school if they're always hungry. On a large screen, the volunteers are shown some pictures of the children in the Manila feeding program. And the stories John shares are rough. Many of the kids are orphaned. Some are addicted to glue sniffing. And all know the pain of hunger. But John is here to show how IT Tender is helping to change lives for the better. Like Nadine, a petite 17-year-old with bright eyes. She started out in the feeding program and is now a group leader. She came for the food, but she stayed for the education. In the next picture, we meet Jassy, a street kid who entered the feeding program at age 10. So him and his single mother and his siblings lived on the street under an overpass. They had this soiled mattress that the whole family would sleep on, but literally living on the street. And when we met them, we immediately introduced them to all of our programs, our feeding program. We said, Jassy can come to our after-school program until we could find a sponsor for him to go to school. And John did find a sponsor. In fact, his parents back in Canada stepped up with $25 a month to help send Jassy to school. And Jassy is able to go to school, and he is the head teacher in our Sunday school program. So he's teaching younger children. He also teaches at our nutrition program. A little later, we venture halfway around the world to drop in on John and his team in the Philippines to see how the Gleaners' soup mix bags are helping build stronger bodies and minds. On the other side of the globe, we're tracking another shipment from the Ontario Christian Gleaners. This time, it's an impoverished neighborhood called Sukat in the southern part of Metro Manila in the Philippines. This is where we currently hold our nutrition program, and we've held nutrition programs in various slum communities here in Manila in the past. But this is a particularly unique community, partly because of overcrowding and, of course, um, extreme poverty. So these simple homes built on bamboo stilts are right over the water, and most of these homes don't have running water or electricity uh, made of just plywood, corrugated metal roofing um, that often gets torn off in typhoon season. Quite simple shanties. The daily meals are served in an open area about the size of a basketball court that's next to a busy road. And normally we would hold our feeding program outdoors at this area because it's a bit of an open space to gather the children. However, this is right by the bay and it's typhoon season now. And during typhoon season, that gets flooded completely. We will gather the children on this bamboo bridge on, on the floor. So there's actually no tables or chairs. And these children are very, very comfortable sitting on the, the floor or um, popping a squat. Sometimes they'll squat. The food is cooked up by mothers who volunteer with the feeding program. And just like in Haiti, the women here find different ways to use the gleaners' dried soup mix, from making porridge to spring rolls to veggie patties. Filipinos are so creative and they have so many wonderful dishes. So what we will often do is actually buy some other foods from the local community. And it's great that we're supporting the economy here. So we'll go to the local market and buy chicken or eggs, different kinds of protein to add to this mix. John's organization works from the basic premise that it's difficult for a hungry child to learn. But fill their tummies and teach them leadership skills, and they can become the agents of change. So our goal is really to see children from extreme poverty 
be able to complete their school, but we also want to empower them to be leaders in their communities and to give back as well. But here's what's interesting about the IT tender program. It doesn't go on indefinitely. Rather than creating dependency, this program stresses self-reliance. Parents are encouraged to upgrade their skills, learn about budgeting and good nutrition. We see it as a partnership with the parents because we recognize that many of these parents don't have jobs. They are by no means lazy. Many of them are scavenging in the garbage dumps, um, pulling out metals and plastics and paper and selling them to what's called junk shops here. And really what we want to see is we want to see these families empowered. So that's why this feeding program, it's not an indefinite thing. When we go to a community, it is strictly 6 to 12 months. Uh, 12 months is usually the maximum it might take for all the kids to reach a healthy weight. As the hearty soup is served up to the Filipino children and their parents who are part of this nutrition program, John Coffey is filled with gratitude to all those generous Canadians. We, we never dreamed that there would be an organization that would provide essentially an unlimited supply of free food to impoverished children around the world. And we're so thankful for all the farmers and the volunteers. We wish you could be here. We wish you could see the children enjoying the food because I'm certain if more people could see it, they would help. We've come to the end of our story about the stone soup, a tale that teaches the value of sharing. It's that belief that drives the gleaners in Cambridge, Ontario, where volunteers continue to rescue thousands of tons of unwanted food and use it to feed hungry people around the world. 